Hello, this is Dean McDonald from Tech Skills. In this video, I will show you some different motherboards. I will identify the form factor of each motherboard, and then I'll also point out the common components and features that you'll find on most motherboards. Let's get started. Since I will be opening computer cases, I need to make sure I use some sort of anti-static protection. In this case, I'll use an anti-static wrist strap. Put that on my wrist to make sure that the wrist strap is tight. This is connected to an ESD mat also has a grounding wire that's connected to a grounded outlet. When looking at each motherboard we need to identify the form factor. Form factor being a BTX or an ATX or an NLX motherboard. In this case we have a micro ATX. A couple of things we can identify that with is first of all the ATX power supply connector. In this case we have a 20 pin ATX connector. We also have the processor up in the top center. We have the RAM slots on the right hand side of that and then we have all the integrated components to the left of the processor and then down here we have the expansion slots. This motherboard happens to be a Pentium 4 motherboard. We have the 4 pin 12 volt connector for the Pentium 4. Right in the center of the motherboard we have our north bridge. This is the chipset of this motherboard. Down in the bottom right hand corner we have the south bridge. So these two chips work together to control data as it's being transferred around the bus. This motherboard has a PGA478 socket. has a PGA478 processor. This is a Pentium 4 processor. This motherboard has two RAM slots. In this case we have DDR RAM. This micro ATX motherboard only has three expansion slots. In this case we have three white PCI slots. So we don't have an AGP slot, we don't have an ISA slot, we don't have an AMR or a CNR slots. So on this motherboard we can only install three expansion cards and they must be PCI cards. At the bottom of the motherboard we have the BIOS chip here. And this one happens to have a CMOS battery that's perpendicular to the motherboard as opposed to laying flat on the motherboard. In the bottom right hand corner of this motherboard we have connections for our case switches and case LED lights. In this case we have a connection for a power LED, an HDD LED or our hard drive activity light, and then also our DC power switch. A couple of other connectors to note. Here we have a CPU fan. This can be used for a CPU or a case fan. We also have an integrated audio connector. So this generally connects from the motherboard to an optical drive like a CD-ROM that allows the CD-ROM to play direct sound right to the sound card. This 10-pin USB connection allows us to connect a USB connection that's on the front bezel of our computer case to the motherboard. Protruding out the back of the case we have all our integrated I.O. ports. In this case we have our PS2 keyboard, our PS2 mouse, we have one serial connection, we have our parallel connection for our printer. We have a video connection for our video card. We have four USB. We have an integrated network interface card. And then we have three audio controllers. One of those being a microphone, one of them being an output, and one of them being an input. To practice identifying components, watch this video in full screen mode and press the pause button. Try to identify as many parts on this motherboard as you possibly can. If you've had a chance to identify parts, I'll go through the motherboard and point out the major components. This motherboard has a square form factor, 9.6 inches, so this is a micro ATX form factor. The top center of our motherboard is our CPU and heatsink assembly. This happens to be a Pentium 4 processor. We also have the 12 volt connector for the Pentium 4 processor. To the right of the processor we have our memory slots. In this case we have two DDR memory slots. To the right of the memory slots we have a 24 pin ATX connector, 34 pin floppy controller, and our primary and secondary IDE controllers. Here are the connections for the front bezel. So this connects our power switch, our reset switch, and also the LED lights. Below the IDE controllers is a CPU or case fan. Here is a external USB. So we have a USB connection on the front of our case. This provides power and data. Here's our BIOS, our ROM BIOS chip. CMOS battery. And then our two audio controllers. This motherboard has three white PCI slots and one brown AGP slot. 
In the center of the motherboard is the North Bridge chipset. And down here is the South Bridge. Back of the computer we have our integrated components. We have our PS2 keyboard, our PS2 mouse. We have two serial ports, one right here and one right here. Parallel port for a printer. Audio inputs and outputs. We have two integrated USBs and then an integrated network interface card. As before, pause the video at this time and view in full screen mode. Try to identify as many components as possible on this motherboard. Once you get a chance to do that, I will describe and point out the major components on this motherboard. Here we have a full ATX motherboard. You can tell by its rectangular shape and also the ATX power supply connector. Top center we have our CPU and heatsink assembly. To the right of that we have our memory modules. In this case we happen to have three memory modules. To the right of that our 34 pin floppy controller and our primary and secondary IDE controllers. In the bottom right are the connections for our case. In this case we have a hard drive LED, a power switch, a reset switch, an external speaker, and a power LED light. Our case connections on both the wires and the motherboards are very clearly labeled here. You can see this one clearly says HDD LED. If I remove this connection right there on the motherboard, it also says HD LED. So these are clearly marked. It makes them easy to find and easy to connect. Near the case connections, we have a case or CPU fan. We have a socket style BIOS chip and our CMOS battery. For expansion slot, this computer has a communications and network riser or CNR. It has five white PCI slots and one brown AGP slot. In the center of our motherboard we have two audio connections. We also have two CPU fans and then our Northbridge chipset and our Southbridge chipset. This one happens to be a VIA chipset. This motherboard has an integrated PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB connections, two serial connections, one parallel port, our audio connections, our microphone, our input and output, and this one has a joystick and MIDI controller. Here's another example of a motherboard in a computer case. Pause at this time and view this video in full screen mode and see if you can identify as many components as possible. And then I'll go through the whole motherboard and point out the main component. In the center of the motherboard we have our CPU and heatsink. To the right of that we have our RAM, our 20 pin ATX power connector, 34 pin floppy controller, our IDE hard drive and optical drive controllers. At the bottom of this motherboard we have a CPU or case fan connection. We have one modular connector for all our case wires. So in this case we don't have a single wire for each LED light or a single wire for the power switch. We have one modular connector that has all the wires in it. On board we have a onboard speaker so this would be used by the BIOS to make its beeping sounds. We have our BIOS chip. We have our CMOS battery. And then we have a series of jumpers here. One of these would be used for resetting the CMOS. We have a front USB connection. So if we had front USB controller on this particular case, we could plug in the wires for that right here. This motherboard has three PCI connections, these white connectors here. We have an AMR or an audio modem riser connection. We have two connections for our CD-ROM, CD-IN, and our auxiliary. And then this one is used for the audio for a telephone. Some modems might have an audio port on them also. On the back of this motherboard, we have our integrated PS2 mouse and keyboard. We have two USB connections, one serial port, one parallel port. We have integrated video, our MIDI or joystick controller, and then our audio in audio out, and microphone audio ports. In this video I showed you some different computers, identified the type of motherboard they have, the form factor, and also some of the major components. If you get a chance to practice this, get some computers, open the computer case, try to identify what type of motherboard it has. Try to identify also any of the major components. You can even go to motherboard websites, take a look at the graphics they have, and try to identify the major components that these motherboards have in common. Good luck and thanks for watching.